What does this lead to? It leads to learned helplessness. This condition where we think, well, there's nothing we can do, why even try? And now it becomes true right. that these technologies are actually uh, persuading us in ways we don't want because of our beliefs about them. So check the story that you're telling yourself and just try telling yourself a different story. It's a big part of it, yeah. Right, and we see this happen a lot of times with people across all, all ways. I'm not good at math, mm -hmm. I'm not good at this, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this, and then it's self-fulfilling. Right. You said there's also reimagining the trigger and there was another piece. Yeah, the task. Okay. So this uh, th th this technique is, is about how do we see the, the work itself differently? So if we understand that all behavior is spurred by a desire to escape discomfort, well, what do we do when the task itself is uncomfortable and we don't like doing that work. And uh, I, I searched and searched and I didn't, I didn't find any techniques that I really liked that really worked. Some people like to use flow, you know, the work of uh, Miha Csikszentmihalyi. Uh, and it's, it's, I'm sure you're, you know flow yeah, very well, but like flow state, the problem yeah. with flow states is that they're really good for things people already enjoy. Right, uh, an athlete uh, that yeah. gets in the zone. Surfing, or all surfing that yeah. right, that's fun stuff. How do you okay. get into flow during your taxes? How right. do you get into flow cutting your grass? You can't. <laughs> it doesn't work right, that way. Right. Even Csikszentmihalyi says uh, he doesn't give any real advice on how to do that. And so those would be good examples of tasks that you might not want to do. Cut the grass like. or do your taxes. Yeah. For some people, working out. For some people. Right. Okay. So what do you do? Th this to me is, is, is magic. Uh, so I, I, I worked with um, uh, Dr. Ian Bogost, who is at Georgia Tech, and he has this theory that he calls play anything. And he believes that you can learn how to play a task but play doesn't have to be enjoyable. That the job of play is to divert our attention, not distract. Distraction is about doing things you didn't plan to do. Diversion is a refocusing of attention. And so we can use play under certain conditions to help divert our attention during a task that we otherwise would not enjoy. So he gives the example of cutting his grass. He hated cutting his grass. And so he wanted to figure out how can I learn to play cutting my grass and he gives us two ways to do this. He says the first step is to add constraints, right? So how quickly can I cut the grass? How can I cut the grass with the least number of turns? Add constraints to the, the condition, like a, like a sandbox, right? Kids like playing in a sandbox, not because the, the sand is everywhere, but because it's only in the confines of this little box. Right. That's what makes that experience fun. The second thing that we, that we can do to learn how to play anything is to look for the variability. So he advises us against what a lot of people preach, which is using an extrinsic reward, right? Add a spoonful of sugar. That's what Mary Poppins tells people. Bogus doesn't like that. He thinks that's really bad advice because what we do when we add a spoonful of sugar, and we do this a lot, we said, if I work out, I will give myself a smoothie, right? Not only are smoothies horrible for you, but that's another <laughs> point. The, the real point here is that if we only use extrinsic rewards, we never learn to enjoy the task itself. Because it's only about the prize, the ribbon, the, the, the treat that comes after the reward. And actually yeah. studies find that uh, when people are given these extrinsic motivators, these ex extrinsic rewards, they're less creative, they're less likely to stick with the task over the long term. So he says, instead of looking for the, the fun, the play outside, look for it within the experience by focusing more intently, not trying to take your mind off the task, but more focusing on the task itself by looking at the variability. How do you do that? So when Bogos wanted to learn how to play this activity of cutting his grass, he learned everything he could about grass. As crazy as that sounds. The different sod he could use, how he could cut it differently, the fertilizer, he focused more intensely on it so he could find the nuances, the beauty of that task, and that's how he learned to play it. And you say, well, that's crazy, how do you do that? Think about all the stuff that people seem to love that to you would be work. So making coffee, to me, is work. But I have a friend who is crazy obsessed with making that perfect cappuccino. Working on a car, are you kidding me? To fix a car, that, you'd have to pay me to do that. I wouldn't do that for free. And yet I have another friend who's a car buff who in his spare time loves the looking at the variability and the constraints of fixing up his, his hot rod. My friend who loves crochet, she loves it because the same exact principles. But for, to me, I, I mean, that would be work to, to crochet. So it turns out it's not so crazy that we can actually, by, by adding the constraints and by looking for the variability, we can learn to play anything. 